Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to episodes 13 and 14 <clears throat> A Magical Girl Lyrical Nunnel Hut Strikers. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 13 and 3, 2, 1, go. BTW, I'm gonna have a little snack because I'm hungry. <laughs> So, just in case you hear like a crunch or something, <laughs> it's crackers, or and I might end up eating my kettle chips up behind me. I'm so cold. <laughs> Feels like it got colder in here even though I turned the air off. Is she about to get tested on? I don't want to see this. Because in their way, that's your saviors, and you're going to hold them near and dear to your heart. Oh, and they gave you a kind of clothes, something to cover yourself. Thank God. But don't you still want to take her though? Exactly, we don't want that. I mean, I get you, but still. Go home. 
Nice. No, no, no. <laughs> if we only knew it's not her. Oh, <laughs> you want to do? No. Oh, y'all fail. Okay, long story short, she escaped. Oh my God. She's gotta be somewhere on the grounds at least. She couldn't have gone that far. I mean, still, you know, a child, but you never know. The fact that she got there late, like that. <laughs> Can you speak? Okay, who's your mama? They'll find a way. I mean, you always do.
Unfortunately. <laughs> Girlfriend! Girlfriend! That's the wife! Watch when this gets edited, that white part, that's going to be like a peak and it's going to cut it out. <laughs> Oh, she's about to cry again. So, of course, yeah, they also had attachments to her, but not well, and also the separation anxiety. Oh, baby. That's like my dog. Like, oh my god. Re okay. Remember the time, and I'm gonna, I cannot believe I'm talking about this again. I went on a vacation, and he couldn't come with us. This poor dog thought he was getting abandoned, and I, and I was like, oh my god. But my, long story short, girl's trip sucked. Came back Sunday morning, which was the last day. Went to go get my dog. My dog was just like, huh? Ah! Like, imagine if I go anywhere else, that dog is going to have a panic attack. <laughs> like, he gets upset when I leave to go to work, and I cannot imagine if anything else happened. He feel like his whole world is over when I leave to go to work. It's so cute. Right? I mean, relax. Damn.
Yeah, so if you want to give a hug, give each other a hug, whatever, Jesus. Looking like the cloud cards right here. She might say right to you right now, but you know, maybe in the back of her mind, she'll be like, nope. like he's gonna break them out.
Don't caught that right. I ain't say, baby, I watch your back. It'd be like that. <laughs> Mm-hmm, running over it. <laughs> Just two moms watching over their kids. Oh my God. Oh my God. That still hurts. See, I feel like the what she is meaning by that like of course yeah she doesn't want anybody to be in the same predicament that she was she doesn't want anyone to feel the same sadness um abandonment as she felt when she was young and stuff but I feel, no matter what regardless you're going to face challenges like that from anyone from people who you love people who you care about people who could just you know come into your life any moment in your everyday you know lives and such well someone's going to be attached to you one day and then they toss you out like you're garbage like you're nothing and it's really truly sad because some people just don't think when they see another person that you know they think of them more as objects and not as a person and it's like it's the same thing with like <sighs> toxic people and, and you know comments and such like that and People not realizing that someone, you know, you making a bad comment or threats or anything to that one person, let's use me as an example, you you don't know that I have, like, feelings and everything behind any word that you say to me and you that you're offensive of it. You don't think about that. And it's usually because possibly you've been hurt by someone else and so to make yourself feel better, you want to do that to someone else. And sometimes I really wish people wouldn't do that but it's it's a circle a circle of life thing it's gonna happen regardless and such and so i mean i understand she wants to try her best and trying to prevent all that but it's inevitable it's always going to happen to someone someone is going to go down that route and it sucks
Ain't that funny how the next episode is called Mothers and Children. But Vimeo, she's adorable, really. I just, I don't want anything to happen to her, okay? But, you know, sometimes there's a point where something happens to a child and I'm not ready to happen, see that. I don't need nothing to happen to a freaking child, no. Um, once again, regardless, I always draw the line at children. I really do. I don't like in animes and my TV shows and whatever, even in my horror movies, do not do anything to the kids. We draw the line at kids. It's the one thing because if I see a kid get hurt, I just want to cry and, you know, run over there and console them. Like, oh my God, everything's okay. I don't do anything. Let her be fine. But yeah, like the the woman who was working with the um the head of command, yeah, she making me feel some type of way. I mean, yes, he wants to take down Hayate's, you know, the one thing that she's building up and such in her career and everything and saying that, oh, hey, she's a scapegoat. We could just, like, make something up and then, boom, we can just, like, have her fire force. Did it? Is fire force? <laughs> have her little group be canceled and done. And so I feel, it feels like we're going in that direction where it is going to happen. And it was very interesting for the three of them, for Fate, um, Nanoha and Hayate to have that conversation. So how Hayate is like, but you know, you might lose your jobs. And it's like, in a way, they already knew that by joining this, you know, on this journey with you. They may still have your job, their jobs at the end of the day, but they might not be able to work where they're currently working right now. Now, speaking of Vivio, again, with the situation of her getting lost, you would think, that honestly dead ass they would literally want to put this child like on 24 7 supervision wherever she goes someone follows her and such i mean yes you're you're in like a little like a not really a hospital but not really also a church but you're somewhere where the nun, where nuns and nurses work at like almost like still a safe haven and stuff where she could still be protected and such. But the fact is it was very easily for her to escape and get down to like where the garden was. Somebody should have been around watching that little girl. So I, I love her. She adorable. I beat somebody up for that cute little girl and such. But um, I'd watch myself around that little girl because you don't know what she capable of. Most of these kids, some of these shows, You'd be like, mm, I got, look, mm -hmm, got my eyes on you because you might be doing some shit. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. But go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode 14. Alrighty, episode 14 in 3, 2, 1, go. Once again, they're the perfect parents. Like, oh. I need to check something real quick. 
I should have did this before. Let's see. Okay, never mind. What's up? Excuse me. No. <laughs> In the middle. No. Again, two moms. <laughs> I'm so bad with the kid. Oh my god. Uh oh. Oh. That was so fucking cute. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, cause she couldn't stay, cause she had to go train her other kids, oh my god! No! <laughs> I can't <laughs> Also, as well. There we go. Security. Oh, 
right? But I mean, I don't like him. Don't trust him. Would not want to keep him with my kids if I had. Well, no, my my dog is my kid. I would not keep him with my dog. I feel like he wouldn't take care of my dog. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Riot Force. Where the freak did I get Fire Force? I also thinking about Fire Force at the same time. <laughs>
It will. But the payoff will be grateful and grand. <laughs> That's what she buys, girl. Not a little bored out of her mind. Oh. I know her. Okay, but hold on, hold on, wait, 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 what if she doesn't want to go with a family? She wants to be with you. It will take time. Mm -hmm. I I'm guessing that means yes. Uh-oh. Oh, it's okay. It's happy tears. Of course.
She really is, truly. I think so, too. She's going to try her damn hardest to just keep this family, this other little family that she has, together. Oh, okay, paper they wearing. Eat that soy, oh my god. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? He's just so suspicious. I just don't trust him. Mm hmm. So you have two moms. This feels right. Oh my god. <laughs> I still sometimes wonder how she can eat all that. Oh my god. If I could have a stomach like hers and not gain weight. Oh my god. This episode hit way too much in the fails, especially of, you know, a situation between a mother and, and their child and such. I mean, we got to see different acts of it today, really, and I love that. But you feel bad for, you know, Subaru and her sister because they lost their mother. I mean, and the same thing with Kato and um, Erio and such, but they have them between 
Faye and Nanoha, that is their other mother figure for them. Because, I mean, yes, Faye has taken in those two and she's accepted them as her as their guardian and such. And taken them in and took care of them, nurtured them, everything. So, but I love the fact that, you know, Kettle was like, yeah, did she see you as a kid? Her kid or like your younger brother and I mean that's a good question but something tells me she sees them both as her kids just like Nanoha sees Vivio as her child and such and it's a lot of responsibility of taking care of someone else that's the same thing with a dog or any type of animal it's a lot of responsibility and they're your babies and you want to care and nurture for them you want to you know always confine in them I mean heck at the age that I am with my mother and how the relationship, I am so close with my mom. My mom will always be there to protect me and such. But there are times where I have to be um, a grown woman and just, you know, do it all on my own. Because in the end, there's going to be a day where she's not going to be there with me. And that is truly going to hurt me, like, so much that I don't even like thinking about it. And... Do I think it when I get to that day, will I truly be ready? I don't know. That's the thing. I think that's something none of us truly know. Really, when you lose someone who you care about so freaking much and who's been with you, like, how do you move on from that? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Was she wearing that on? <laughs> She was wearing. <laughs> Stop this fucking show. That's worse than Nana Hanfeishing. It would have been cute if they both would have gave one of their ribbons to her because she could have had one blue, one blue again. Oh my god. I love kids. I love kids so much. They're so freaking adorable. I can't wait to have my. Well. Not counting my dog because my dog is my kid, you know, but when I, an actual baby and such, whenever I have kids in the future, but like seriously, they're just so fucking cute, I can't. Like anytime when I see, like, okay, no, anytime when I see a real life kid, anime kid, whatever, I end up crying over them because I'm like, oh, they're so cute, you want to protect them so fucking much. But like seriously, I'm glad that, you know, for now... Fate and Nanaha are going to take care of her. But something also tells me in the end, if they still cannot find a family for her, because yes, it is going to take a little bit of time. Um, in the end, I feel like Fate and Nanaha will adopt her together, or really Nanaha herself will adopt and take her in. Because right now, yes, she's just her guardian and stuff. And Vivio will still call her, you know, Mama Nanoha and such. But I think there will be a point where she's like, you don't have to call me Mama Nanoha anymore. You can call me Mama and such. And, and I think that's sweet. Like, hopefully that happens. Like, you just want a good, good, good ending for this show and for this, you know, cute, adorable couple of a mother and a freaking child and I can't. But, okay, yes, um... Once again, do not trust the higher-ups on this because sometimes, you know... You can, and sometimes you can't. This is the one situation where I can't. But still, like, yeah, I need, once again, I need Hayate to watch her, her back, especially with Riot Force 6, because anything can happen. Even Fate's brother is concerned on it, because also Fate is in this as well. Same thing with Nanoha. And everybody, regardless, is going to do everything in their power to help Hayate, Fate, and Nanoha. So even though if they can't, you know, they're forbidden to get any sort of action in this, somebody's still going to try. But they're not going to do it, you know, when they're on the clock. They're going to do it when they're off the clock, when they're able to not have someone on, you know, watching them 24-7 and such. And they're able to be on their own and find out some information because something about this feels very fishy. I have those weird feelings like in the pit of my stomach every single time when I watch the show and I'm just like, yeah, I don't have a good feeling about this. Something's going to happen. We're, we're planning on something, and it ain't good. So, of course, you have to wait and see. But other than that, guys, that is my action view towards episodes 13 and 14 of Magical Girl Lyrical Not Hut Strikers. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Join my squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for Patreons and next Wednesday for everybody else for episodes 15 and 16. Bye, guys.